you had this surgery, was it last year? Yeah, June 2017. Yeah. Uh, what made you want to have it in the first place? So I had saw like loads of celebrities, um, obviously on um, social media, um, there was a, oh, your Kim Kardashians, there was people in the UK that had had it done and it just seemed like an easier um, route to lose weight. Did you not, well, it's not really about losing weight, is it? It's about changing your shape, I suppose. Um, what was it you didn't like about your own bottom and what was it that you liked about the, the celebrities that you were seeing? So, in this procedure, they take fat from unwanted places and then put it back into your bottom. So it was about that I wanted to lose it in certain places and the thought of getting mm. a bum bigger and losing weight at the same time. So they take the fat from your tummy and places and put it in your bottom. Yeah. OK, so how much research did you do? How did you choose, you know, where to have this surgery done? So for a couple of months, I had been looking at a few Instagrams of, like, surgeons and um, clinics, and um, I had researched on the celebrities that I had them done, and they all said it was fine, like, it was pretty good. And... So you weren't too worried. So you went to a, a, um, a clinic also in Turkey. Yeah. Um, so tell us, what was the surgery like? How was it when you woke up? How did you feel about the end result? So when I woke up from surgery, I was very cold and um, sore, and I was just told, like, you'll come round a bit. And, and then when I came round, I managed to get up to go to the toilet, and I looked in the mirror, and I was literally swollen from head to toe. I could barely open my eyes. Like, it was horrible. Like, I literally looked in the mirror. This is you? Yeah. It's, it makes me feel sick looking mm. at it. And it's, how were you actually feeling? Uh, I literally thought, like, that I was going to die. I didn't know what was wrong with me, and they said to me that it was a... I took a reaction to the local anaesthetic. Doctor, I'd like you to talk us through exactly what this bottom lift is, uh, what it involves. And I would have thought one of the more positive things about it was that because it's using your own fat, there's less likely to be the sort of reaction that, that Jane had as a result of this. Where and why and uh, can it sometimes go wrong? Well, I think Jane described it quite well in terms of what it, what it involves. It's basically using the techniques of liposuction and, and fat transfer. So it's something that we use quite often. I, I do a lot of breast surgery and we, we use it often times for difficult problems to correct things in breasts. But it's then been moved on and, and it did start in Brazil that you would take fat from other areas, as yeah. Jane said. Patients usually lie flat. We're, ju we're just going to show you here on screen a before and after sort of um, uh, image, thank you, of uh, what, what, what is supposed to happen. So the one on the left is the before and the one, on, one after, in line with what you're talking about, is exactly what happens. That's yeah, nice. this is that's actually you. James. Yeah. This is yeah, she is James. Yeah, so that's that. You take it from you probably would have been taken from around, you know, the, the waist, the flank area, and then it's processed, washed, and, and then it's injected back in. The problems come with using very large volumes of fat. If relatively small volumes of fat are used, and if they are put between the skin and the muscle, then the chances of problems are relatively small. But people tend to want to go bigger and bigger. That's the trend. Then you have to put the fat deeper. When you go very deep into the muscle, there are veins, and in those veins, if the fat gets into those veins, that's when you get very serious complications that fat that flies around the circulation, known as an embolism, that can block the lungs, it can block the heart, can lead to very serious illness, were you can warned, lead to death. Jane, you know, before you undertook this surgery, were you warned of the risks? So, like, I know that when you go under a general anaesthetic, there's, like, a chance that things can go wrong, but I was... Well, I was under the impression that someone was closely monitoring me and if anything was going wrong or if there was any signs of infection afterwards, that something would be done. So you said you felt like you were dying. We can see your face is swollen. You obviously had a very bad reaction. How were you treated? How was the aftercare at the clinic? And what was it like when you came home? So um, when I was in Turkey, the aftercare generally wasn't, wasn't good at all. Um, I was crying. I was in a lot of pain. I was told, like, you've paid to have the surgery done. Did you sit done. down? Like, you no, know, you get, like, a cushion thing, but because I was in so much pain, obviously, because I had an infection going through my leg that I never knew, I literally couldn't. So you're literally face down, and it, you've literally got to get someone to, like, handle you to get up. So you had, like, five days like that before you could even get on a flight to I, come home? Yeah. Well, getting on a flight to get home is a whole other argument, mm. isn't it? I well, mean... indeed, it is, yes. I mean, the, you want to have aftercare, that's the thing, you know, and having, having surgery at home, my practice is very close to my home and very close to my NHS practice. I have 24-7 cover for my patients and prolonged cover. And I always say to them, you know, sometimes I get people travelling from a distance 
And they said, can I go home? And I said, well, would you like me to travel 50, 60, 100 miles away from you? They all go, no, gosh, I wouldn't. I said, well, why would you do it with me? Mm. I want to be close to you. You want to be close to me in those times where you need the care. And if I'm away, I have people I've trained with that I know, and they cover me and I cover them. Mm. So there's seamless care for people. Do you carry the thing out is, doctor, you, you just don't do it. You don't, you don't do, do, do it. Procedure. No, I'm not doing it. We were starting, we were thinking of doing it. We were seeing a trickle of inquiries coming in, and we were starting to see some patients and assessing them. Um, we were about to start it, and then the American Society of Plastic Surgeons put out a statement, a kind of emergency statement, saying that it was the highest death rate amongst all procedures. The highest death rate? Of the all highest death rate amongst all cosmetic procedures, and they say it's one in 3,000. Now, that is, that is really, you know, by far and away the highest of any sort of procedure we do, and it's right. because of these veins. Now, I knowing that, Jane, now hearing that, now having gone through what you went through, what caution would you issue to anyone thinking of having that lift? Like, just don't do it, like... I think people need to, if they're thinking about having having it done, to fully research on it, um, message someone maybe that's had it done and speak to them about their experience, and just not to look at a glamorous lifestyle of a celebrity and think that that's... Was it worth all, all the pain and worry no. for a more rounded bottom? If I knew that that was going to happen and it would have, I would have had the problems that I had with it, I would never have done it.